Hello there, and welcome to part 8 of our Hackolate tutorial. In this part, we're going to be talking about how you can use the Hackolate Studio to import or reverse engineer um, your data models. Right? So that means that you're not going to start from scratch, you're not going to be creating objects and relationships and all of those types of things like we did in the previous uh, tutorials, but we're actually going to do that based on something that is already there, based on an existing data structure. Right, so we're going to import these structures into our Hackolade data models. Right? They could be existing data models or they could be new data models. And the reason why we do that, obviously, is because we're not uh, living on an island. You know, no database and no data model is an island. We need to be integrating with what we already have. It's not a green field. And we're going to use that for our modeling and documentation purposes. Right, so, and then, once we have that, once we have that reverse engineered uh, structure, we can start and do more work on that, right? We can, we can add those descriptions, constraints, we can evolve the schema, we can in, uh, share it with other people using dictionaries, and we can integrate it into all of our other processes, right? Now, what's important is that you understand what are some of the different sources for our reverse engineering uh, capability. And there's quite a few, right? There's quite a few different types of sources that we could start from. And you will see it when you start w working with the tool. Um, it depends on the type of target that you choose, but in, um, in, in, in every target you will have a choice of different reverse engineering sources. Could be a JSON document or a YAML document, could be a JSON schema or a YAML schema, could be DDLs, right? DDL files that you get from a wide variety of um, uh, database systems that know and work with DDLs, like for example, Oracle or SQL Server or DB2, right? Whatever it might be. Um, could be an XSD schema. This is super interesting because many othering modeling tools allow you to export their data models into an XSD schema, an XML schema definition. Um, so that's really interesting. You can start from there. You can also start from an Excel file template. And, you know, we all know, you know, the world uh, would fall apart if we didn't have integration of IT systems based on Excel. Um, well, that is also true for the data modeling world. Many um, bulk update operations or any kind of integration operation is actually based on an Excel template. Hackolade has a template that you can uh, look at and that you can use for automatically importing stuff into your data model. Then, of course, we have target-specific instance reverse engineering, which means that you can actually connect Hackolade through its plugins to a particular database or a schema file or a schema registry or a cloud storage environment, and then say, okay, pick me up what you have there, pick me up what you find there, and integrate that into our model. And then last but not least, uh, there's a really important source that is uh, um, uh, making more and more headway these days, which is a data dictionary as a source for reverse engineering, like, for example, Colibra, but there's many, many, many other like that out there. So let's take a look here. You know, let's take a look at file-based uh, reverse engineering processes. Right? So you can select one or more files right, that um, you can choose from, and then these uh, files will be read by Hackolade, and it will then... Uh, import what it finds in those files as entities in your entity relationship, relationship diagram, right? So um, you can also choose to import it as model definitions, right? So you can then use them uh, yourself uh, at a later point as you know, as you work with these definitions. But the most common use case would be that you import it into your ERD. When you do that, it will also uh, try to assess, the tool will try to assess you know, wh what's already there in your model and see if it needs to be uh, creating a new container or a new set of entities or if it needs to merge it into those uh, existing uh, entities. Right? Really interesting feature, I think, is that when you um, import nested structures, like for example a JSON document, right, uh, or you know you, you start from you know a MongoDB database or whatever, and you uh, import that into a um, normalized target, for example a relational database system, then uh, we can apply the rules of normalization for you and automatically apply that and apply that uh, um, during your reverse engineering process. Reverse engineering instances are a little bit different, right? So this means that you're not you know, reading a file from your file system or from your GitHub repo, you're actually going to be connecting over the network to an instance on-prem or in the cloud um, using a set of connection parameters, right? And then um, you're going to read from those instances and automatically create your data models uh, from what it finds on those instances. 
Um, also important, you know, both the file-based um, uh, sources and the instance-based sources that you have available to you for reverse engineering are also available from the command line interface. Right? So that means that you can automate it. You can put this into your um, CI-CD pipelines um, uh, from a Docker container, for example, and have that run on a nightly basis and automatically reverse engineer whatever it is that you have in your s data stores so that you can also compare it to what was there yesterday. Right, and see if there's any changes that should or should not have been um, applied to those uh, systems. Great. I'm going to take a moment now and show you how you can work with these different um, resources. Um, so let's uh, go to the Hackolate Studio. So let's start here, right? We're going to create a very simple uh, model for a JSON document. Right? But we're actually going to say, okay, well, I already have a JSON document, so uh, I'm going to reverse engineer what I already have which is uh, here in my uh, file system, and create documents in the ERD from what I find. Right? So you know, if I do that, it's going to start reading that JSON document and create a model for that existing JSON document as part of my schema here. Right? So it's as simple as that. You, know, you can do this with lots of different um, file formats. Right? So I can also um, grab a Parquet file or an Avro schema or whatever it might be and do exactly what I just did here. Now, I'd also like to show you how you can do this um, a little bit differently when you have that same JSON file, but you want to uh, uh, reverse engineer that into something different, like, for example, a Postgres database. Right? So if I um, reverse engineer it, that same file into a Postgres database, then it's going to allow you uh, to normalize that file automatically. Right? So here, I'm going to create tables in the ERD, but I'm also going to normalize complex data types into separate entities. So it's exactly the same file. Nothing has changed to the file, right? But when I do that uh, reverse engineering, you see that it comes up with a quite different model. Why? Because it has gone through the process of normalization, right? It's interesting, right? You can apply different methods there as you um, do your reverse engineering depending on the environment that you are in. And so then finally, I'd like to show you how you can apply reverse engineering to an instance, right? So let's say that I have a MongoDB instance that I want to reverse engineer from. Well, I've got a connection here pre-configured to an instance in MongoDB Atlas, right? And I'm going to connect to that instance and say, well, these, this is the database and these are the collections that I would like you to reverse engineer for me, right? So there's movies, comments, sessions, theaters, users in there. Now, there's a really interesting uh, capability here that is specific to the MongoDB environment, which is that it will allow me to attempt infer inferencing the relationships between collections based on object IDs. What does that mean? You know, in every collection you will have uh, documents, obviously, and those documents will have IDs, object IDs. If two collections have corresponding object IDs, then that means that we can infer that there is a relationship between those two uh, entities. And like you see here, right, so we have a movies collection, right, and that has a particular structure, right? We also have a comments um, collection that also has a particular structure, and that relationship is there because the movie ID here corresponds to the movie ID over there. Great, so with that, I ha think I've shown you uh, some of the possibilities of our reverse engineering um, uh, tool set, and um, obviously there's much more to show there. Uh, I invite you to continue to read up on our documentation, the blog, and of course the fantastic new book um, on MongoDB database modeling and schema design. Um, look forward to working with you on this in the future. If you have any questions, please reach out, and if not, I will wish you a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.